binding. Stay with us, Lord, for the evening draws on and the day is almost over. Blessed be the Lord our God.
psalm appointed for this evening, Psalm 104, found on page 602, Psalm 104. Psalm 104, found on page 602 in our Red Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. You wrap yourself with light as with a cloak. of your chambers in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and the flames of fire your servants. You have set the earth upon its foundations so that it never shall move at any time. You cover it with the deep as with a mantle. The waters stood higher than the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up into the hills and down to the bodies beneath. To the places you had a you set the limits that they should not pass. They shall not earth. You send the springs into the valleys. They go between the mountains. All the beasts of the field drink their fill from them and quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the air make their nests and sing among the branches. You water the mountains from your dwelling on high. The earth is fully satisfied by the fruit of your works. You make grass grow for flocks and birds and plants to serve mankind that they may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden our hearts. Oil to make a cheerful countenance and bread to strengthen the heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he planted, in which the birds build their nests, and in whose tops the stork makes his dwelling. The high hills are a refu refuge for the mountain goats, and the stony cliffs for the rock badges. You appointed the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun rose the time of its setting. You make darkness that it may be night, in which all of the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions, the lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they slip away. and lay themselves down in their dens. Man goes forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are, are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your cre creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that 
Leviathan. Which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you. To give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all of his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth, and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God written in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. We start to sing the office in number 12. One, two, twelve.
second lesson is found in Mark 13, beginning at the 12th verse. <clears throat> and if anyone said to you at, this, at that time, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe, do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce signs and omens to lead astray. If possible, they left, but be a light. I have already told you everything. But in those days, after the suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elects, elect from the four wind, winds, from the, earth, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. The word of the Lord.
won't certainly keep you very long, but as I went to prepare for this evening's service, something has been in my mind, I'd say in my spirit all afternoon. We should spend some time in prayer. Okay, so I won't do too much lecturing or preaching or teaching tonight because I want to give us an opportunity as we kneel before the sacrament to pray. Not just run through the hymns, run through the divine praises, but have a quiet moment, a moment of adoration. I have realized in our parish we have had a number of sick people over the past several weeks. And for me, sometimes it's very burdensome. And you always know that because you get at least three calls a week, Father, I need you to pray for. And that, that's, that's very hard. Not hard to pray, but hard to want to carry these people and to pray with these people. And we want to see God do miracles in this parish. Amen. And in order for that to happen, we must spend time with God. Because yes, it's the priest's duty to cry out to God on behalf of the people. But certainly your tongues are not silent. And you too can call out to God and ask God for what you need. And these kinds of services are actually that opportunity to have a moment with God. And so there was a devotion I read during the week that I wanted to share with you. And it is entitled, Meaningful Prayer. Meaningful Prayer. Psalm 17, verse 6 says, I call on you, O my God, for you will answer. Give air to me and hear my prayer. I call on you, O my God, and you answer. Give air to me and hear my prayer. Stop a moment and think. Is it not often the case when men stand up to pray in public or kneel down to pray in private that they are thinking far more of what they are asking for than they are of the great God who made heaven and earth? This God has all the power. Is it not often the case that in our prayers, our thoughts are wandering elsewhere? We take the name of God on our lips, but there is no real conscious approach to God in our hearts. I will repeat that. We take the name of God on our lips, meaning we know how to say it. We, we know how to pray, but there is no real conscious approach to God in our hearts. Meaning when we kneel before the sacrament, yes, even song is a beautiful service, but are you really aware of what's really happening? Are you really aware of whose presence we are really trying to get into? Not the bread but the Jesus who said, I am the bread of life. Bread is a sustenance meal in some countries, like St. Vincent and the Grenadines being one. They eat bread every day, all day. Okay, uh, Bread is a big deal. And for us, a sacramental people, when we kneel before the sacrament, it's not just about the lights being off and the host exposed. It's about being in that presence and being conscious that we are in God's presence. A presence so mighty that he can put himself in the form of the element of bread so that you can partake physically of it. If there is to be any power in our prayer, if our prayer is to get anything, the first thing to be sure of when we pray is that we really have come into the presence of God and that we are really speaking to God. One person asked me, well, Father, how do, how do I pray? I can't pray like you. And I told the person, I'm not a prayer. 
I don't know if that's a word. That's about the second time for the day. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm not a prayer. You, you got some people who could put it down, man. I mean, they got the big words and the, they sound so eloquent and nice. And, you know, I be sitting there sometimes, feel shame that I wear in this collar and can't put it down like they do. But then I learned something. If you could spread gossip, you could pray. I, I put it in a way we could understand it. The same way I could get on the phone and elaborate to somebody what I didn't see and, and, right, and make it juicy for them that we could get into a conversation. Guess what God wants? Tell him. Talk to God the same way you talk on the phone or to your friends or to your family. It doesn't have to be gossip. Even if you are just sharing something with somebody. You know, prayer, yes, can be eloquent, but prayer also can be simple. Tell God what you want. He already knows you. Know. Yes. He just wants to see if you know what his will is for you in your life. That's why we pray that, Lord, your will be done. So, yes, God knows your husband, your aunt, your grandmother, or your friend needs healing. He knows. But humbleness means that we come to ask God for and tell him, Lord, heal Grammy. Lord, I need you to protect my child tomorrow morning. You ain't got to have no long words for that. Lord, cover him. Lord, cover her as they go into this pandemic. You see, oh, let those words, let these two words, to God, to God, to God, sink deep into your hearts. And from this time on, never pray, never utter one syllable of prayer until you are sure that you have come into the presence of God and that you are really talking to God. Hear me? Do not go into prayer again after tonight lest you have really put yourself in, and you'll know you're in his presence. Because you'll feel different even before you pray. You will feel a peace, a comfort, a joy before you pray. In fact, once you are in God's presence, then your words become less. Because you don't have to force your way into his gates. You are already there. Beth Moore quoted these words. Prayer keeps us in constant co communion with God, which is the goal of our entire believing lives. Prayer keeps us in constant communion. The word communion means relationship and fellowship with God which is the goal of our entire believing lives. Tonight I encourage you brothers and sisters to get into his presence. And I've said this before, a priest by the name of Ulrich Smith, he's the retired dean in St. Vincent, and actually he's the dean emeritus in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And he told me once, he said, Father, when you go to church, I notice you're like a busy bee. Make sure everything is done. And he said, I was a deacon then. And he said, that is, he said, that is laudable. That's great that you got to make sure. And he said, I notice you say your prayers. But he said, have you ever allowed God to watch you? Just stop. Don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. And let God see you. And I was like, what is this old man talking about, man? You know, I, you already say I was praying. You already say I get things in order. I'm sure he was, God was watching. And as I grow in ministry, I understand what that means more and more every day. Just stop. Be still and know. And here's the key word. It's not the still listen. It's the knowing. Be still and know. And the sooner we learn that God is already here, that means our prayers have already been heard. Tonight, take a moment. 
be still and know as we kneel before the blessed sacrament in meaningful prayer. Thanks be to God. As we prepare the altar for benediction, we sing the hymn 362, All Things Praise Thee, God Most High.
we come to God, to God, to God. With our hands lifted up and our mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving, we will bless the O Lord. Tonight we bring before God, especially all those who have requested our prayers. We pray for Meryl and Rosemary Rogers. We pray for Christopher B. Knowles. We pray for Adeline Knowles. We pray for Hildred Knowles. We pray for Diane Knowles. We pray for Argina.
Lord, for those persons who are in a state of despondency and cannot work and are home because of various businesses closing down and feel stressed, feel like there is no more hope. Lord, we pray that you would calm their spirits. We pray that you would comfort them. During this week, remind them that you have the whole world in your hands. And if they want to trust in you more, and love you more, and serve you more, that Lord, you would show them more, and give them more. For to whom much is given, your word declares, much is required. Now, Lord, we will be still. For we know that we are in your presence. And I invite all of you to bring your own friends, whether silently or out loud. Bring them down to the throne of God.
thank you all for worshiping with us this evening, and we encourage you to join us on Tuesday morning for Mass here at St. Paul, or Friday mornings at St. Athanasius and Deadman's Key at 7 a.m. Bible studies on Wednesdays via Zoom, and our link is always shared, whether it be through WhatsApp or printed in the bulletin. And we encourage you to remember that confirmation classes start next week, Thursday, October 8th, via Zoom. And so those who are not confirmed or would like to be confirmed, and those already in confirmation classes are reminded that this is of importance and we want to see you confirmed in the faith. And so we hope that confirmation by God's grace will be administered possibly in December of this year. With all of that said, brothers and sisters, stand now as we sing our recessional hymn, number 21. Our day of praise is done. Amen. Yeah.